It is Death Watch time. So let me. I got the visualizer out too. So hopefully in the second half of this we will do some drawings because I figured out some of my my settings on my visualizer and hopefully the white balance doesn't blow out our commissions but we'll see everything's trial and error here and the older you get the harder it gets to figure this stuff out so bear with me but hopefully uh, practice makes perfect okay so this is page 18 of death watch a little bit of a preview dun, 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 dun drawn the wolves w o o f's wolves that was a joke that i did fail to film so maybe not all righty here we go let's just keep keep it going Discord, where are you? Discord. That pops up there. I don't see it. comes it's just taking its sweet time what's new I don't have time for that let's go to Chad land let's go to streaming and let's add some friends Allison, I could add you to Discord. Viciously innocent. Let's see. Dis uh, check Discord general chat. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, we got to work. Congratulations. <laughs> Made a little invite to you and Del Sol in general chat. Del Sol's a, a big deal in the crypto art world. What's that? What's oh, Who's in? Someone else is in the chat? No, no, I don't think he's in here now. I just made an introduction to you two in, in general, general chat. Okay. And and who you said he's big in the in the crypto, so he's a collector. I I know he's no he's he's an artist. Oh okay. Um, yeah he's yeah. Yeah, and just just so you know, we're live, right? You know that, right? You're on the interwebs right now, talking to everybody. Oh nice! Well, <laughs> happy to be here. Chad's number two fan for the audience. Yeah. Who's number one? Joy, of Joy. course. <laughs> Can't beat her out. I'm not sure you want to even try, right? Well, I thought I was until I met her, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm, I got nothing on on Joy, nothing at all." Yeah, she's she's too nice. So he's a he's a he's big in the crypto art world. Uh, is he like uh, who's that one guy? Uh, Beeple? Is he like Beeple? I don't know who a Beeple is. Dude, like Beeple was like the first artist billionaire. 
yeah, I don't, I don't know. So he's, well, he was, I'm sure he was he'll, doing he'll, NFTs before people knew what NFTs were. And so like when NF, the NFTs like blew up, like, I think it was like Sotheby's or one of like the auction houses, like offered him an insane amount of money. And then he auctioned off his stuff and just, you know, like just to do the auction, they offered him the same amount of money. But yeah, he, he might be, I don't know. I don't know if he, if he kept his crypto, then he might not have that much, but if he sold it at like the height, he's definitely like the first billionaire artist. Yeah, I don't think Del Sol's a billionaire, but he's pretty pretty well known in in all the communities. Okay. He's from Canada though, so try take, not to hold that against him too take, much. Take off, eh? No way. <laughs> Allison says no one can beat Joy. You want to hear? Did did you want to hear a funny Joy story? I'd love to hear a funny joy story. Is she there? Where's she at? She's right in the other. She's like right behind me in the other room. She's she still has work. Her, her she so she's an accountant for the Love Group, and she has like busy times during the month. And um, this is one of her busy times where like she has to get all the numbers in before. I don't know some type of accounting deadline. Plus, it's tax season too. Um. But anyway, so she goes down to Cedar City to visit her dad for like two weeks. And she cooks him so much food that in two weeks he can't fit into his pants to go to church. In two weeks. So That's that's pretty savage. <laughs> Is that why you have to run all the time? Is Dude, it- I... If you don't, Joy would have you weigh in 400 pounds. Dude, if I, I swear to you, like, if I was 35 and working out like this, I'd be like 230 right now. But because I'm like 50 <laughs> and working out like this, like, I'm at 300. But, yeah. What, what brought all the running on? Was that seriously just to keep Joy from getting you fat? Or was it like yeah. you just decided that you, you're – just do an art full time now and you want to run well like first well first of all like when you're an artist i i've been sitting here since i got a late start today but normally i'm at my desk drawing at eight in the morning and then i don't get done till five o'clock at night and even then like i'll take my ipad upstairs and like draw in bed till i fall asleep so i i literally like if, if I didn't get out every day and exercise and move, I'd be sitting all day doing absolutely nothing. So the, so basically, I go to bed early. Wait, Joy and I wake up at 5 in the morning. First thing we do is hit the gym. And, um, and then uh, she has to be at work at 7. So I basically cook breakfast and sometimes lunch, depending on the day. Like today, she just had leftover soup. But, you know, I generally cook breakfast and lunch. And then when she's done, she's usually done at four. So she goes up and makes dinner. And then I'm usually done with my comic page around five. I'm not today because I'm I'm skipping around all over the place. I actually started the last page, but I didn't want to do the last page for the live stream. So I went back to the sequential order of pages. But, you know, I'm usually done with my page right around dinner time. Um, every now and then, like, I'll have to come back down and, like, add gutters and Photoshop and stuff like that, but, um, but yeah, and then it's rinse, wash, and repeat, and, and we have, like, a little bit of family time, it's a tradition at our house that we always play, like, a card game or, um, a board game or something like that as a family, but, like, right now, it's me, Joy, and maybe sometimes Erica, because Tacey is working two jobs. Ooh, that's an ugly line. Tacey's my daughter. Have you met Tacey? I think she went to me. She went to a few shows with me. Tacey and Erica? No. Never? No, not yet. No. Nope. So, um, but anyway. And then it's it's Betty Bye and back up again in the morning and just cranking away. So, 
Yeah, but you're sending texts out at two, three in the morning, so you you never sleep, man. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah, I I got ten hours last night. I'm doing good. That's like two nights of sleep for me, but it's because I got sick. Ever have any crazy concept art pop into your mind in the middle of the night when you're dreaming and you wake up and just get to work on it? Dude, all the time. But like, like what's some big ones we recognize? So, um, usually I I like landed on a page. Let me. So, usually like, and that's the cool thing about like doing your own book. So like this wolf here. Let me. Can you see my screen? Steve, what I'm talking to you? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Uh, let's go back. Okay, so this wolf, next next page, he basically just like flips out and turns into like this crazy wolf. And like that's the fun thing. Like I really enjoy like drawing monsters and, and just like crazy stuff. So being on a horror book is a lot of fun. Because, you know, it's like you're drawing it as fast as you're thinking it. But, yeah. And with, with like, with concept art, in comics, you're just doing it on the fly most of the time. Like, every now and then, they'll, they'll want to see concept work before you begin a book. I wonder if I can show. I did some concept work, um, person stuff, but... I don't know if I'm still under NDA or not, but it's pretty rare. It's pretty rare because nobody wants to pay for it. And if you're not getting paid for it, nobody wants to do it. So half the time you're doing concept, you're just doing it on the fly in the book. But I, I did video games for, uh, I worked in advertising for video games. So I did, I did development for like two and a half years at Sapphire. Um, worked on games like Starcraft and uh, other like really crappy Nintendo DS games that no one ever heard of. Um, and then I went and started working at a, a advertising group in Murray, Utah called Origin Studios. And we did a ton of uh, ad campaigns. Uh, ad campaigns, uh, concept art, uh, packaging, standees, I mean, like, you name it. And I was there for, like, five years. And um, it was a great place to just learn a ton. But after a while, um, after a while, like, you need, to, you need to move on. So I quit that and started doing comics. And the rest is history, so... What's the funnest book you've worked on so far? Well, obviously, th th you can't uh, count your own stuff. I, I was about to say, like, this is the most you fun. Can. But, um, <laughs> but dude, we had such a good time on Harley. Like, Har Harley was like the perfect project. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, because DC didn't think it was going to do anything. They thought she was a throwaway character. Um. Because, I mean, they, they had they had tried to do Harley stuff before, and I don't know if it was just, like, too early for the zeitgeist. I don't know. Um, or if it was just more of the same. Like, they didn't redesign her costume or anything. Like, she basically appeared like she did in the, the animated series. But, dude, like, they put, they put, like, Terry Dotson on the art. And whenever DC puts Terry Dotson on the art, that means they expect to make, like, a killing. And it just really... It was just sort of there. It it wasn't. It didn't really make an impact. But like, when I got the email, at, so what happened is I was, I was working for DC, and I thought they were going to offer me Supergirl. And it turns out they, they were going to offer me Supergirl. But Jimmy and Amanda had picked me out for, for Harley. And so what happened is, they basically said, well. Obviously, he's going to take Harley, and they were right. Um, so they never offered me Supergirl, but that's that's the offer that I was waiting for. 
Um, uh, it, it, I just finished filling in for Supergirl at Comic Con, and I had another book. I think I was doing like Demon Knights or something crazy like that for DC. So I'd hit my Demon Knights deadline, but I was basically doing my Supergirl deadline at the floor of the show, and I penciled a double wide spread of Supergirl while Joy drove back in the Prius. I took my artboard. I was in the I was in the passenger seat drawing a double wide spread. And we got home and I scanned it and sent it off like 15 minutes before the end of my deadline. And so I really thought like I cuz I was I was gunning for Supergirl, you know what I mean? Um and uh and then like 3 or 4 days later they they sent me the offer for Harley. But, I mean, and then Harley absolutely blew up. I mean, that book was insanely popular. Um, and thank goodness Jimmy and Amanda, like, in, like, I know how much they defended me. Because once the book started doing good, the first thing DC wanted to do was yank me off and put another artist on. And if it hadn't been for Jimmy and Amanda, like, I would only have done, you know, probably like two or three issues. Um, because that's that's what happened with Zatanna. Um, they yanked me off Zatanna um, and put Stefan, who's a phenomenal artist, absolutely phenomenal. But you know, they it's like they ha they have like the artists they believe in, and then they have the artists who they give stuff to like solve problems. And I, I was like a problem solver for DC. Um, I was like the guy they called in when an artist quit or an artist was going to blow their deadline. You know, basically I was like the fixer, you know? Um, and so essentially I, what you're saying is Chad Harden is DC's plan B. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was for sure. <laughs> for sure. The and best and, plan B in the industry. And, and for Marvel too, like there was, there were, there was a couple of years where I did, a book for Marvel and a book for DC like every month. So, um, but no, when, when Harley blew up and it started becoming popular, it, it just, it completely changed my life. There's, there's a lot of people that think Harley's my first book. And it's just because none of my other books really, you know, caught, caught the popularity. Um, I traveler traveler was pretty popular actually. Um, and and Dragon Age was popular, but it was popular with like the gaming crowd, not really the comics crowd. I mean, I had I had Russian hackers like hack into my computer and steal my pages for Dragon Age. Like I I had I got a call from Dave Marshall, like, dude, why are you leaking pages on the internet? I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like, I didn't leak anything, and he was like, well, go to this web page and like there are my pages. And I'm like, crazy. I was like, I, I was like, I have no clue who these people are. So, I mean, that's how popular Dragon Age is. Like, you know, the, you, you know, we, in comics, if you sell like 50,000 units a month, that's a good number. Like you're not going to get canceled. Um, if you're an independent book and you're selling 50,000 books a month, you're like a rock star, right? Um, those numbers are nothing compared to like gaming numbers. So, like, I did Dragon Age, and to this day, I have gaming fans that when, when they find the book, they'll call me and ask me if I still have pages for Dragon Age. Um, so, it was really popular. It just wasn't popular with comic people. Like, I, I don't know. There's, there's pages on eBay, by the way. I, I check weekly. Oh, for, for Dragon Age? No, just all your stuff in general. You know me. Yeah. I'm a sucker for for a good deal which are getting harder and harder to come by these days yeah the the yeah so apparently the whatnot is like the new place so it's like the happening place are you finding any deals there or are you like me where it's like hard to figure out and you haven't really figured it out yet it's really hard to navigate whatnot honestly and everything's live so yeah. Like if you don't know what you're looking for, it's it's hard. So like if I go in and I Google Chad Harden, I think there's two two things that pop up. Um so yeah, it's just difficult to navigate right now. Yeah. 
And I'm completely ignoring my chat. Hold on one sec. So we got Milby's Illusion in here. Terry, can you read the chat? Yes, I can. Sorry, that's Perry. Is Milby's Illusion. And then Miguel says, sick. Thank you, Miguel. Chili Chapters, that's Dev. Hey, Miguel, that's Del Sol, right? Miguel Del Sol? Yeah, uh-huh. That's that's the guy. See, and what he's done is he's brought so uh, a lot of the crypto stuff, the NFTs are are becoming gaming platforms. So the art does gaming type things. Okay. Um, okay. So that's really the direction that stuff's moving in. Okay. Now is that. Is that how is that driven? Is that driven by the artists or is that driven by the developers? That's a really good question for Del Sol to answer. Um, let me see if I can get him in chat. Okay. Hold on a minute. Let me let me ping him. Let me see the artist. Okay, so the artist says that's cool. Yeah, artists need all the help they can get they need as many venues as they can they can get into they they have to have their fingers in all the pies i'm drawing this bridge wrong hold on i'm going off my sketch and i'm realizing my sketch doesn't make any sense Uh oh, it says invite invalid. I wonder if my Discord still supports. Let me check on Discord real quick. Yeah, it looks like a lot of people got an invalid invite. Holy crap. I didn't realize I had a unread inbox. But he, he didn't send anything there. Okay. Let me minimize this and get back to it. Sorry, guys. Like I said, one of these days I'll have, have a smooth operation. But until then, we're just building. Building, building, building. You guys probably don't want to watch me drum point stuff like stupid direction roll on. Did I lose you, Steve? Oh, no. There we go. Miguel, can you hear me? Hey, nice to meet you. I can hear you. All right, cool. Nice to meet you. Yep. Hey, nice to meet you. I can hear you. All right. Got a little bit of echo. I don't know if that's me or you. That was me. That okay. was me. Sorry. No, no Sorry. worries. Great work. Great work, man. It's so cool seeing your draw live, man. Thank it's you. Really, really cool. So, uh, Del Sol, can you explain to Chad a little bit how the Web3 stuff and gaming and art is kind of all merging together in, in the crypto world and the stuff that you're doing? Yeah, sure. Sure. Well, it's it's very new, so it's a little bit of a wild west so it's like i feel like the cards are starting to fall into place more and more but it's uh it's just dynamic art like the way i see it it's i'm nothing like what you're doing i feel like first of all i have to say i have so much respect for comic artists like it's the i think the hardest uh, technically it's 
absolutely amazing what you guys can do. And I'm in no, no stretch in the imagination in that uh, range technically, but it's, um, it's basically the way we did it is uh, art that evolves. So if you have, let's say, X amount of pieces, holders can just sacrifice one to have another piece get better visually and enhance. So it's basically you add this layer of dynamic, I would say gameplay-ish kind of mechanism that come into play where if you're a collector, you can engage with your art in a more kind of technologically driven way. Okay. Um, so it's this kind of in between. That's the best way I would describe it. It's like, it's a, it's a new medium that offers new ways of approaching it, which is, I think, very, very fun for my generation, like growing up with video games, mm -hmm. that culture and aesthetics, having that come into more of the traditional art side of things is, uh, for me at least, has been mind blowing creatively ever since I've, I've gone in this space. That's cool. That's very cool. It's freedom and it's completely driven by the artist and by the community. So there's the feedback loop is direct. You have live reactions of people, which can be a little overwhelming sometimes, but at the same time, I feel like it gives so much, I don't know, it's very, very um, intense, like in a, in a creatively intense in, a, in the best of ways, I find. Yeah, well, I feel like I'm juggling like six different things right now, just trying to have like, you know, like drawing live, talking on Discord, monitoring the chat, you know, trying to get this stuff to, you know, just to work. Cause I, so right behind me with the, I have this set up right now. So when I'm done drawing digitally, see the visualizer, I'm going to start drawing traditionally too. So, cause I, I want to, I want to plug my whatnot. I got a whatnot sell going on. Now, do you sell anything on whatnot? You can sell NFTs on whatnot, correct? I don't even know what whatnot is, to be honest. Never, I've okay. never played with it. I really, okay. What, what is it? So, um, probably about, okay, before COVID, you would get on Facebook, and a lot of retailers were basically having live auctions on Facebook. Um, and they would take orders like through the comments and things like that, direct messaging comments. Um, and then, you know, they, and they would basically have like a television show at a set time on, on Facebook. And so I think what happened is like during COVID, someone basically figured out, it's like, Hey, you know, why don't we basically make an app that is Facebook live auction and we can add in services like ship station. And, um, because if, if you're an artist and you're doing commissions and things like that, you're constantly sending out your work. So like you, chances are you're going to have like a ship station account or like a, you know, uh, um, what, I don't know what the postal service one is. I think it's just stamps.com. I think maybe that's it. I don't know. Um, but they basically put everything in one place. Um, and, and the money as well. And I imagine that's how they make their money is they, they hold it in escrow until the item actually, uh, arrives to the buyer and then you know so it's like microtransactions like uh like paypal and venmo which they've started charging fees now but it used to be like before they charged fees that's how they made their money is basically the money went to them they held it for a while they gained the interest on millions of transactions and then uh but now they're you know making money off of a uh, transactions because they're just charging a flat percentage now like a credit card would but anyway so whatnot um in in comic books uh you have several different markets you have the retail market which is okay so like right now i'm drawing death watch this is an interior page for death watch and a typical comic book will have anywhere from like 24 to 16 pages of a main story and then um, if usually if it has like a 16 page main story, you'll have like an eight page backstory and that way the books still come out around 24 pages, but you're basically, you know, making a book every month and then, um, you're sending it to a printer and then it goes to a distributor. And right now there's like four or five different distributors. Um, but eventually it, it lands on a re a comic book retailer shelf uh, at a local comic book store. So you have the retail market, and then another way for artists to make money is they go to conventions. 
um, and at conventions, that's a chance for like you to interact like directly with your fans one on one. So that's really cool. But what's been happening with the convention scene is the convention scene used to be basically just put together by fans. And now it's basically all corporate. So it used to be like um, a convention would invite you out and they'd give you like a free artist alley table. Um, and, you know, and now artist alley tables are anywhere from like $400 to like $800 depending on the convention. So it makes it harder for an, like, like if you're going to go to a convention and make money at a show, um, for you to clear your overhead, you probably got to make a couple of thousand dollars just to pay off your artist alley table, your, your gas, your flight or whatever. And don't get me wrong. There's, there's still a few artists who they get comped all those things by, you know, by the, by the organizers. But like, if you're just a, a break in artist trying to do the hustle, um, the convention scene is very quickly becoming a, basically a, a, a no go because the amount of money that you have to invest just to get out there, you're, you're going to be lucky if you break even. And it's sort of the same with comic books now too, because like if you look at the printing cost and, and how much the distributor keeps and how much um, the, the stores have to obviously keep a percentage too. So, you know, you're looking at like, if you're selling your book for $4, you're lucky if you get a dollar after that money goes through to the distributor to the comic book store, back to the distributor, and then back to you. So, you know, so the retail market for a comic book artist, like you're, you're waiting at a bare minimum of 90 days turnaround on getting money, money back. Um, and then the convention market, the, the cool thing about that is it's money directly into your hands. Um, so you're getting cash. Um, you're also making credit card sales and, and whatnot. But um, that's the cool part about the convention scene. And then there's other ways like Patreon, you know, like crowdfunding, Patreon. So, you know, Kickstarter, uh, you know, you know, whatever, whatever little thing you can set up. And then I've set up a Shopify store, but like right now I only have like one item on it. I mean, I really need like a full time assistant that can just like handle all of that while I draw. Because I'm trying to I'm trying to hit my drawing deadlines on top of like running a web store, running you know all this stuff, and it's you know it's mission impossible almost. But um, so whatnot is just a new a new place to sell your stuff, but it's right now it's completely blowing up. Like it it's gonna be. Um, I I have comic book friends who made a handsome six figures just doing whatnots last year. That's it. That's not their retail sales. That's not their convention sales. Um, that's them just selling stuff on, on an app on their phone. So you know, anyway, it's something I'm trying to figure out and trying to get into because um, you have to, you have to uh, always be figuring out where, where you can sell your stuff, right? So, anywho, that that's what that's, it is. That's super cool. Is it is it um like you so you sell let's say like a physical piece or is it like digital piece? Like how what what type of of products can you sell and whatnot? You from is what it, I understand, you can sell NFTs. You can sell so you can sell both. So if I, if I'm selling a piece of physical artwork, um you know, I'll sell it and then I'll create like a shipping label label and send it out. And then if you're an NFT artist that I, I have, I have no clue. I've never done like I I've done some stuff with like crypto comics and things like that. But uh, as far as like actually selling an NFT, I don't think I've actually ever sold an NFT. So I have no clue how any of that works, but, um, but that's why you guys need to talk. See, this is another, this is another medium for you, Chad, is the whole NFT world. And I, I talked to you about it before. Um, it's just, it's, it's different. It's a, it's a different platform altogether, different market, different. Uh, it's, it's just different. It opens up a whole new, um, 
uh, market, yeah. really. Yeah. And, like, I know, like, a little bit. Like, I, I read enough books that I think I understand, like, how crypto works. And um, I definitely know how, like, or, or, you know, like, the origins of Bitcoin and stuff like that. But um, it's hard to, it's hard to wrap your, the, especially the older you get it gets way harder to like wrap your mind around like new concepts. And so um, it's hard to understand when, especially when you've been doing things like one way for so long. But I, I know this much, like when, when you stop growing, when you stop trying to figure things out, that's, that's when you sort of just drop off everyone's radar. You constantly have to be like striving and finding the new thing. So, um, and then I, everything I do is basically based off of my clients. Like if my clients say, Hey, this is what I want. That's what I give them. You know what I'm saying? So if you guys, I mean, Steve, obviously like, you know, people don't maybe don't know who you are, but Steve probably is my number one collector of original art, I would say. And so if you want me to do it, if that's like a service you want me to pr provide, like I am down to learn, that is for sure. So, um, anywho, but I I know nothing about it. So, I'm I would love to hear like, you know, how it works. How you know you know what do you what do you guys do? What do you buy? What you know what would you like to see? Because you know that's one of the reasons why I'm doing creator own stuff. Like I can't do anything with Harley as far as like NFTs are involved. Like they, they made sure about that. Like day one, like day one, they're like, Nope, you know, this, this is not happening. Matter of fact, I, I don't know if you remember this or not, but they yanked my, they yanked my sketchbooks off of, uh, crypto. Um, so, uh, and I don't know how they found them, but they did, but my sketch, you know, like both my sketchbooks, even though they're not necessarily filled with like a ton of DC stuff. I mean, there's some DC stuff on there, but like my first sketchbook had a picture of Harley on it. My second one had a picture of wonder woman. And so I, you know, I had those up. I immediately had to yank them down. Be so, yeah, so like, and I'm, I'm gonna, this is going to be really like my dummy version of this. And, and Del soul really could help fill the pieces in, especially if you want to learn more about how, crypto artwork so what i get into is is there's like the chicken you drew for me right mm -hmm. so i'm going to use chicken as the example mm -hmm. so i think there was like two thousand chickens nfts mm -hmm. um so those uh were minted out so every one you bought cost one avax avax at that time was a hundred dollars okay and that's a um, that's a a, a cryptocurrency correct like yeah 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 so and this is the part where i don't know a lot of so i'm just using my imagination here i i know it's more work than this but i'm just oversimplifying it but say there's a base chicken mm -hmm. and so you drew a chicken mm -hmm. and and then those chickens come in different colors with different objects like shoes and hats and, and whatever those are randomly um generated onto your base chicken okay right and then those are sold for whatever mint price you determine an avax to avax mm -hmm. uh there's a project right now that's minting today it's three avax um so th that's like the gist of it again i this is the really stupid version of it because i'm i'm not a dell soul in the world mm -hmm. um so he could talk more about how how that works but essentially you're not selling a piece you're selling two thousand pieces right over the course of a of a mint well and it, it sounds like you're taking so when when you do concept artwork like if you're designing an orc for world of warcraft you're not just designing like one orc you have to give them like 50, 50 different types of weapons 50 different types of helmets 50 different types of breastplates. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Like 20 different kinds of shields, 20 different kinds of clubs. And so it sounds, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Miguel. Um, 
it sounds like you're just taking all those assets that you've already generated for concept art, putting them into options, and then selling all your options. Is that is that the gist? Kind of. Okay. Kind of. Okay. Basically, basically, what happens is the way we did it was um, they're insects, and they're different parts of the insects, and okay. there's different matches that happen. And depending on what matches happen, they're more or less rare on the rarity scale. But what's cool about it, like it's it's pretty simple technically. Speaking is very similar to what you're saying. It's like you have a bunch of assets, and then there's a randomizer with different levels of rarity, mm -hmm. and that equals that level of rarity. And ba the basic is that. But the thing that's cool is that as an artist, like you you have this kind of direct um, communication with your audience, mm -hmm. and you can just basically it's your you can do whatever you want. Like there's a, a level of freedom that I, I come from corporate animation, like doing ads and stuff like that. Yeah. And the level of freedom you have when doing this <laughs> is you can like, you've been in the oh. shit for everyone listening. Oh yeah. That's oh, yeah. code. That's code for like, you have been in. Oh. The shit. <laughs> dude, dude, I've ate shit for years, but I've been so many. <laughs> you know, I've oh been... my God, dude. Oh. Well, a nightmare, but good experience on a nightmare, dude. Oh. But it's so it's a world of difference. You can talk with hundreds of potential collectors and just build your your own world and expand on it. And it's the world building around that way of uh, making and selling art and distributing it is just uh, it's the most fun personally I've I've ever had uh, creating. So if ever you you want to dig into it, I'd be happy to have a chat with you and like break it down and on a private call, or whatever. It's uh, it's not as complicated as it looks, and it's uh, it's really, really, I think, worth it for any creative, especially with your skills. The type of stuff that you could do, I'm sure, would be completely insane. Okay. But it's like it's a it's a weird it's a weird space still. There's a lot of weirdness, so you need to approach it a certain way, and it's not for everyone. So I still think it's a gray area for many artists, and you have to be careful. But it is uh, it is worth it when it's done well. Well, I think I think what happened, and this is just the gospel according to Chad. But it, it was a lot like the, the California gold rush. Do you know what I mean? Like once the word got yeah. out that there was gold in California in, you know, the early, you know, late 18th or no, late 19th, early 20th century. You had everybody with a pickaxe, you know, running as fast as they could towards California. And it was just, it was just, you know, no regulations, no safety, no, no nothing. And... Um, and I think that happened a little bit with crypto where people, people didn't understand, you know, fully, you know, what it was, didn't understand the risk, you know, dumped their entire, you know, 401k into it. And then, you know, and then somebody, and who is the guy that just got busted that F FTX, you know, the, you know, I don't, all I'm saying is, you know, right now it's new. There's, there's no regulations. There's no, you know, uh, there's no protections like insurance and things like that. It's, it's so new that it can be very risky. And I think that, you know, I think if you're like a casual investor or something like that, that's where it could get dangerous. And so it, you know, it, like all new things, um, like all new things, it, it can, it can be misunderstood it can be uh, uh, exploited. So, uh, but it sounds like you found, sounds like you found like a nice little safe harbor. And, um, um, and like I said, I, I know guys who are working on crypto stuff who are some of the most honest people I've ever met. And shout out to like the crypto comics crew. But um, uh, the whole reason, the whole reason why they've been in open beta for like, so long is because they're trying to fix these problems uh before they happen whereas a lot of people just sort of launch their stuff and and they obviously they weren't ready and people people lost uh, a lot of money so but there's there's people who made a lot of money too so um but yeah i'm on the lose a lot of money side that's that's kind of my my shtig is i, I like to I like to collect pretty things and never really profit off them well i had um i had a uh, a workout partner 
who was buying Bitcoin when it was like $3.75. And last time I saw him, I basically bumped into him, like walking into the Alamoana Hotel in Hawaii. And I'm sure, I'm sure all he did was turn around and sell, you know, his Bitcoin. I, I, I don't know how many he had, but if you, if, you know, he, he was, he was believing in it back when it was $3 and 17 cents a coin and, and mining it, you know what I'm saying? So, um, there are plenty of people out there right now that have made billions off of it. I'm sure. But you know, for Not me, my friend, for, Not me. for the, for the person who just sort of heard about it and, and maybe like invested in it like they would a company like Apple. I'm sure those are the people that have lost their shirts. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, but there, it definitely has a reputation at this point. Uh, And you know, the word, the the words out that it's, it's, it's a risky thing to do, but, uh, with reason it's deserved also. Like it is, it is a very, like a hundred percent, like the bad rep is completely understandable. Like even artists with, um, you know, that have been building their own IP for years, how, like, you see stories of, like, Friends With You, this Miami uh, creative duo, mm-hmm. very known in the modern art world, have created this project and rugged it, I think, uh, a few days ago, and it's, like, you can never tell, it is a completely different field, but I do think that from there will emerge, like, a new wave of, like, artists that are native to that medium, and but it's going to take a while to, like, trim the trim the bad stuff from it 100 percent. like i very i r- risky for sure yeah yeah and just so you know do you know the term rugged chad no uh-uh. so rugged means essentially you you take everybody's money and just leave yeah essentially well that's stealing. that's what the fbx or i keep getting it wrong but that that you know that that one firm that was supposed to be investing all the money like they literally just took everybody's money, put it in a Swiss bank account, and were getting high off the Cayman Islands. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, I I know people that lost everything uh, investing in Enron and uh, Foxconn, and you know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, do you guys remember that when Enron just you know the largest uh, power provider in California, just all of a sudden one day it was like, Oh, we're bankrupt, you know, because they invented their own accounting system. So it's not like the stock market doesn't do the absolute same thing every day. I just think, you know, younger people that are more tied to the digital culture, they're hearing way more about, um, you know, the hazards of crypto and they're not aware that like, you know, this is this is something that happens all the time throughout history, over and over and over and over again. And you know, obviously, if um, if you don't know what you're doing, there's somebody out there that can take advantage of that. But which is why you got which is why you got to figure this shit out for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, that was one of the good things that happened with Harley. Um, it made me a lot more skeptical because, you know, because it it was the first time in my life where like people were coming up to me. Um, like I've, I've had people tell me that their children were dying of cancer so they could get a free sketch so they could flip it on eBay. Do you know what I'm saying? And that only needs to happen to you a couple of times before all of a sudden you're just like, okay, no free sketches. Okay. Let me see your charity number. You know what I mean? Like, and I hate to be a dick that way, but you have to, you have to be that way or you're going to get ripped off. You're, you're going to, that's why, that's why Amanda wouldn't draw anything for me. She thought I was going to flip it. Yeah. Well, from what I understand, I think Amanda's doing commissions now again. And I could, I, I, I'm throwing this out here right now. I'm not speaking for any other artist. Okay. But I think she's actually doing commissions now. But that's absolutely what happened. So, and I was at that show. That was at San Diego. Um, and I had uh, I had Jimmy on my my podcast, 
and um, Jimmy Palmiotti, uh, Amanda's spouse. Um, and because he was like, he goes, you've never seen me mad, Chad. And I was like, I've seen you mad one time. And that was the instance. Because this person basically hounded Amanda. And once again, I'm sick and my kids are big fans and we just drove out here for you and just, you know, you know, and so Amanda did this, you know, did this drawing for him. And before that guy left the convention floor, before he was even out of sight, it was on eBay. And that, and, you know, that flipped a switch, and, Jimmy. You know what I mean? And I was outbid on it, too. I didn't even win it. <laughs> 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 so you, you actually bid on that? Yeah. Well, that. Yeah, I totally oh, did. That, pro- that probably yeah. doesn't help. That probably doesn't help. I, I bid on all of her stuff that comes up. Because yeah. you just can't get it. You, you, and I understand why. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah. It's just like, I have a lot of your stuff before before I was able to meet you. Right. And, uh, all that stuff came off of eBay. Like you sold it to somebody for a hundred and I paid three. Wow. Well, I'm glad that I'm glad that you're just buying directly from me now. Cause it sounds like you're getting a, getting a 60% <laughs> from me. but you know what? Maybe I That's need to I go do. on eBay and find out what people are selling it for and just start selling it myself. Start selling your own stuff on eBay. I'm oh, telling man. you, like, and that's why I never, like, I have never and never will haggle, you know, around price because I, 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 I don't think you can put a fair price on on the artwork that you know both you guys do. I'm big fans of both of your stuff, um, so you know, I'm just always honored when when I'm able to get get a piece. Uh, so, thank you guys for what you do. No. Uh... There have been plenty of times where you have paid for a broken arm or a, uh, no, Steve, we, yeah. You let me know. I'll, I'll keep you happy, buddy. You just let me know. <laughs> well, I, I need some stuff. I really need a back tattoo and I have some ideas. <laughs> you know, my, so when, with the whole AI art that's coming out now, that, that's what my, my brother's just like, let's go buy a tattoo gun. Like, right. Like that That's all we th- So when I dropped off the radar last week, my brother came and picked me up and we jumped in his truck and we went up to, uh, went up to, uh, Boise, Idaho and had a tournament there with our cousin, a poker tournament. And, um, that's all he was saying. He was like, dude, let's go get you in there. He was like, let's go get you a tattoo gun. Like right now he goes, I'll let your first tattoo. Like you just tattoo no. whatever you want on my back. Yeah, you you sign me up too. If you pick up a tattoo gun, I, I will get you people. Hundred uh, percent. Let me know if that happens. Yeah, I, I, I am, I am never the type of person that's just gonna like pick up a. Actually, I have, I have, I've, I've picked up a tattoo gun and tattooed someone and had no clue what I was doing. Um, I think I was in like seventh. I was in I was in junior high school. So seventh, eighth, or ninth grade, I did that at a friend's house, um, and I vowed never to do it again until I could draw something and have it look how I wanted it to look. So I'm gonna have to like, I have to get one, and then I got to like practice on some chickens, because <laughs> apparently that's what you practice on. You you buy a you buy a chicken with the the skin still on it from the grocery no, store. No, no, no. They have dead skin now. You buy dead skin and you practice on. It just what? Like, what? So like, it's, pe- people dead it's skin? Some, no, no, no. Oh, okay. Call it dead skin. It's okay. synthetic, synthetic skin. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But no, I, I, I would want some practice before I did anything to a person that was, especially if they were sober and paying me money. <laughs> I have Del Sol, so uh, I have Del Sol's art on my on my arm. Oh, cool! So, uh, that, no, I like I said, if you're an artist right now, you better be figuring out every way you possibly can to. Uh, to generate income. But uh, now let me ask M- Miguel, are you still on? 
Go on, go on. So, do you need to know like a little bit of programming in order to like? How are you making these mods when you when you make them? I mean, I'm I'm using a gaming term like mods, but I'm talking about. Uh, you're talking about how like, uh, there's like a program that generates the. Um, the options on your on your uh, NFTs. It, are you programming that yourself, or is someone else doing that for you? No, I work with an engineer. Like I have a, a okay. guy on my team. <clears throat> We're a team of three people, and I'm basically the artist. And I have this engineer that does the coding stuff. So we okay. have to build everything custom. But now it's like it's getting to a point where, like even in uh, like traditional art galleries, you're starting to see the NFT space creep on. So there's like self. You can launch it yourself. Like I'm, I'm the next uh, series that I'm doing are going to be self. Uh, like I, I, you don't need to touch the tech side too much. So it's becoming more and more of a standardized practice. Okay. But it, it wasn't a year ago. It's easier and easier to get into. So you're seeing a lot of like traditional artists that say like Daniel Arsham or Takashi Murakami that are jumping into that uh, that space. So it's it's kind of I think going to become more of a like once the the drama kind of settles and it gets a little more kind of controlled, I feel like you're going to see more and more uh, artists emerge on that side without having this whole like tech heavy, annoying part that you have to figure out like you've had to until now. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what's held me back is I I'm not a computer person. And 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 like right. I said, I don't I don't trust too many people to, uh, you know, do that for me. But, um, no, I'm in desperate need of at least three assistants, but I just don't have the money to pay them. So, <laughs> right, Perry, a lot of, a lot of my, a lot of my interns are actually on the, are on our chat right now. So chili chapters, let's see who else, is here. Allison, Perry left. Oh, okay. But yeah, so I when when I was working at the university, they would they would come and they want to uh, they'd want to get like an intern credit. So they had to help me with my live stream. Uh, they're the ones that basically taught me how to do this, get myself in trouble with this live stream stuff, and then um, uh, another one of my former students like set up my Patreon and all that and. And here's the thing, like, it works fine so long as they're my intern. And then the second they leave, it just sort of blows up because I, you know, I don't know how to take care of it. But that's all I've been doing for like the past couple months is like trying to figure this stuff out. And now I actually think, I mean, I got Discord to work. And for me, that's, <laughs> that's a pretty big achievement. So, anywho. Your Discord page needs a lot of help. Though, I, dude, I, I know. I But, okay. But once again. I, I told you, I wake up at five and I'm basically done with my page around, you know, around 5 p.m. So there's 12 hours right there. And then by the time I eat dinner, I got maybe a couple of hours before I go to bed. And just think of all like the mundane living shit you got to do on top of your work shit. There's just, there's just not enough hours in the day, but. You're right. I'm not. I'm. I'm not discounting it. I know I got to do it, but for me, it's going to take me a while to to figure it out before I, um, before I know what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? So I I have friends who absolutely know, and I'm like, how'd you figure this out? And they're like, I just like spent an entire week, just like going through every tutorial on Discord and on, on Twitch and on, uh. I think I'm using like steam labs and, and that's what they do. And like, they take an entire week. Well, I, I definitely don't have an entire week. Like for me to get a, a week's worth of free time, that's like three or four months of weekends before I have a week's worth of free time that I can spend on something. Yeah. The only time you take a day off is when somebody's sick or dying. Yeah. No, fly somewhere. Dude, I, I'm not, I am not kidding you. Like I've been, so Within one year, I lost my grandma, my grandpa, and my Uncle Pat in one year. None of them from COVID, but 
uh, all happening like during that time. But I'm just, I'm at that age. Like my, my grandpa was, uh, I almost said 98, but I don't know if that's right. He was, he was pretty old. Like we, I think he was 98. I'm not, don't quote me on that, but he was, he was definitely up there. But my parents are at life expectancy. My dad's at 75. So here's my dad, like trying to handle my grandpa's funeral and, you know, and every day that he has at this point is a day he's not supposed to have according to, you know, statistics. So, and, and, and that's how it goes. And and you know, what's going to happen this year, Steve? So Chad gets married. I, I'm already I'm already missing Megacon because Chad's getting married, and then um, Michaela's getting married on Free Comic Book Day. You know, so life happens. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and I, I there's a lot of comic book artists that maybe they don't have families, and uh, you know, but I'm a family guy. So like, if my yeah. uncle, but look, you're also the the dude in the front row of the wedding with the sketch pad in your lap doing work yeah i i take my well like when i went down so like a couple of weeks ago i went down to mesquite to take care of my mom and i'm just cranking out comic pages like sitting in the recliner next to her you know while she watches you know she she just like watches like judge judy all day or like judge judy wheel of fortune jeopardy and you know but she she can't even really she can't do anything anymore. She has to have someone be the, her caregiver 24 seven. And that, that's where I'm at. That's, that is where my life's at. So it takes me time to figure these things out, to get it up and running. But I know you're right. I know you're right. I know you're absolutely right. And I totally have to do it, but I'm doing it as fast as I can, which is at a uh, turtle pace. But I'm hoping slow and steady pays off. So, well, and then the Discord stuff. Once you get that going, like that'll be helpful when you start launching your crypto stuff too, because I'm sure it's going to happen at some point. And Discord is really the platform. Discord and Twitter are the platforms that are used for the crypto community to like get their stuff out there in the universe. See, and I, I think. Discord's, I, I treat Discord like social media, but all all other social media, like all the features are built in, so it's really easy, really intuitive. And Discord, it, it, you know, once again, there there is definitely a technological curve that you have to get over. Do you know what I'm saying? To figure out how to use it. I mean, it, it has a user interface, but it's not intuitive. Um, you know, they, they need to appleize it to where they make it idiot proof for me, for me, for me to be able to like, just jump on there and know what I'm doing. It has to be so popular that, you know, basically Apple's made it idiot proof. And that's, I mean, that's, you know, that's why I'm using procreate, you know, on a, on an iPad is because Apple's, you know, basically said, okay, uh, anybody on the world can have a Wacom now for 400 bucks. And here's, you know, here's a, a free drawing version of Photoshop that only costs $7. And you, you, you know what I mean? Like, I almost need it to become like that user friendly for me to be able to grasp onto it. Cause, I, cause I'm not a, I'm not a computer science major. So anywho, but I'm, I'm working on, I'm more, I am working on it. This book is definitely going to be up on Patreon. And uh, I I need I need this book to work out, or I got to go back to teaching, which I really don't want to do. Miguel, I talk. I don't want you to go back to teaching either. You oh, were such man. a grumpy ass when you were teaching, dude. Dude, if you knew the shit, there's not going to be there's not going to be a teacher or a cop in this country in the next ten years. Mark my words. I'll I will. I will bet anyone who wants to put money on that right now, like, let me know if you want to take that bet, but no, 
once teachers figure out that they can do just about anything else that they want to do and make more money doing it, then the only people left that are going to be teaching your kids are a bunch of pedophiles. And that's half of them right now. So, you know, it's, no. I can't, I can't take it. And, and the other thing is, is I care about people. And so my students knew that I cared. And like, I was the only one that would even lift a finger to try and help anyone out. And the institution doesn't care. Like once you, once they have your money, you think the university cares? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So anywho, it's no, it's a mess, bro. But who knows? So let, let me ask you a quick Harley question. Okay. So there are, oh God, I, I think I wrote it down. You have a few Harley faces. Like, where do those faces come from? Like, you don't have a Harley. You have a few Harleys. And I, I'm seriously thinking about going back and seeing if there's a correlation between the face and the breasts. But <laughs> I'm not, not sure I can jump there yet, but. Can you talk well, a little bit are, about like are, are you, where are, the faces come from? Are you talking about for commissions or are you talking about for the book? Both. Both. Because even in the book you have a couple Yeah. A well, couple faces you bounce between. So my friend Crystal was my model for Harley. And I, I used so I think when I first started doing Harley, no, it was definitely Crystal. Crystal was Harley from like um I don't know how many issues of of uh, Harley I used. I, I basically called Crystal up and I was like, okay, here's here's the layouts. I need these poses. And then her and her partner just, you know, took pictures of all of it. I, I paid them their modeling fee and then they sent me the pictures and those are the pictures I used. So, so to answer your question, I'm swapping models. Does that make sense, Steve? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, no, I, I get it. I just didn't know where they they come from. Like, J. Scott Campbell, like, when I look at his stuff, it's mm. the same person, no matter who he draws, especially in them. But it's but, the same. But it, you, it, you take the same person, and you'll you'll change Harley. Yeah. And I don't know if it's mood-based or yeah. pose-based or, like, where it comes from. Well, um, But you'll change her. Uh, but, but... Jace, and this is not a slam against Jay Scott because I would chop body parts off to be able to draw like Jay Scott Campbell. But Jay Scott's faces, like his Mary, the, the difference between his Mary Jane and his black cat is hair color. It's the same, it's the same face. Um, the only time his faces like look unique is when he pulls from reference. Like, do you remember Jay Scott doing like Danger Girl? Yeah, that's what got me into comics. Yeah, exactly. Right. No, um, right, exactly. So, um, but uh, you know that you know the the, the main captain guy was uh, definitely Sean Connery for sure. Like, th there's no way that wasn't Sean Connery. And if you look at like his books, uh, what was the Velociraptor book he did? Like, one guy was Jake Black, one guy was Ryan Gosling, uh, one was. Uh, st who, who's the actress that played Storm? Holly Berry. Halle Berry. Halle Berry. Yep. Um, yep. So you know, so he's he's basically doing the same thing, but he's doing it with celebrity likenesses, which is extremely dangerous because if the if 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 like if uh, Wild Siders, that was the name of the book, Wild Siders. If the book became like really popular and they made it into a movie and people went out and, and just like, you know, glommed onto the comic. That's an instant lawsuit right there. And unless you have what's called like a model release, then um, you're in trouble. And I guarantee you, he didn't get a model release from like Halle Berry and Jack, um, Jack Black and, you know, whoever's face, like, he basically put on his people. So he, he he's, er, every artist is basically doing the same thing. But I'm basically, 
you know, I'm asking my friends. Like, Joy was, did you ever read the Dragon Age stuff I did? Joy was the Quinari priestess in Dragon Age. And then, yes, sir. Um, uh, one of my students, Stacy Pitt, was, uh, uh, I'm forgetting the name of the character, the pirate captain. Uh, I want to say Isabella, but that's not right. Um, anywho, uh, my son and my daughter, so my son was Varric. So yeah, it's, it's, I'm using models. I use, I use reference. So, um, but yeah, as far as Harleys go, I, Crystal, uh, has been a Harley model for me. Jennifer Van Damsel, um, Jennifer's. Well, I'll, I'll waive my fee when you're ready to use me as a model. Okay. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm, I'm, and, uh, one time when I was working in video games, someone put their friend on the packaging to one of the video games. And when the video game got released, they sued Sony and won. And they got like $3 million because that's crazy. Yeah. Have, yeah. You, have you ever been at a convention and be like, Hey, do you mind if I use your face? I, or is it all just like people you've, you've known for a while? The, most of them are people I know, know for a while, and I always get, you know, some 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 sort of receipt, you know, whether it's an invoice, you know, for the actual modeling, whether it's a model release form, um, that basically says, uh, you know, I, I have permission to do this, uh, because if you don't, that's what that's and and nine times I'm gonna also, I'm gonna throw this out there also nine times out of ten nobody cares. Probably a hundred, probably ninety nine times out of a hundred, nobody cares. But if you if the image becomes popular enough, okay. So like Miguel, you've got to know. Uh, uh, oh my gosh, I was going to try and name drop, but I can't think. Who's the guy that did the Obama piece? And he used the photo reference from an AP photographer. And Shepherd Shepherd Fire. Thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. Yes. So that's probably the most famous case. And here's the ironic thing. He was, I, from what I understand, and I could be talking crap, but you know, it, you, everyone has the internet. Go Google the story. Um, he was given the picture by Obama. And, and when you're, or I should say like the Obama campaign. So he was officially sanctioned by the Obama campaign campaign to make that piece now whether that was for like time, time magazine or i can't remember like who who he actually made the image for but he was basically a freelancer so somebody came to him and said uh you know we want you to produce this artwork and then they gave him the picture so the people that gave him the picture didn't do their due diligence and guess who guess who paid the price shepherd did so you know Maybe, maybe, you know, 999 times out of a thousand, nobody, nobody catches on, nobody sees it. But if the original artist sees it, they're going to come after you and you're going to pay. So, you know, if you're doing likenesses and stuff like that, you really, you really got to, you know, you're, you're liable. You're absolutely liable. Do you think Marvel or DC is going to take the hit? Absolutely not read your contract. If you read your contract and you're putting in copyrighted, you know, likenesses or characters or stuff like that into your work and you get caught doing it, you're a hundred percent liable. So now in my case, so, so even, even though, so like you, you, you draw for all, all the big companies mm -hmm. and then like at conventions you do, you, you do art for people. Yeah. And you get paid for that, but yeah. so in your contract it allows. So for that, like you don't have to pay commissions for the commissions you take, right? Like, well, how does that work? What what we have is it, we have an agreement with like Marvel and DC, where first of all you you have to avoid trademarks, so like you can't make a print with like a Superman logo on it or a Batman logo on it, or like any DC. You know, you know, basically, there's there's two type of prints. There's licensed prints, 
that basically D- that has your art on it, but like DC manufactures it, and you actually buy the print from DC as the artist, and then you sell the, the licensed merchandise. But they also have a gentleman's or you know gentle person's agreement where, um, you know, look, sell all the prints you want, sell all the sketchbooks you want, just do it at conventions, and we'll turn a blind eye. So, you know, anytime you're doing Harley, if DC wants to come down on you, they can. Because copyrights are enforceable at will. So they can they can either turn a blind eye to you creating that merchandise or they can come down on you. Um, That's just crazy because, I mean, it's your art, but you sold the rights to that image, right, essentially? No, it, it, it's your art, but your art is of a copyrighted character. So, so I own the copyright to the artwork, but because the artwork is of a copyrighted character, their copyrights, you know, basically they can come in and say, you're making money off of our copyright. We demand compensation. So if they want to come down on you, they can. But, but most of the time they don't. But it, like I said, it's an, it's enforceable at will. So, um, and and the way that Marvel and DC look at it is they look at it as free advertisement. Um, they look at it like, and uh, DC does a better job of paying a living wage. But if it wasn't for like con sketches, there's a lot of Marvel artists that wouldn't, you know, uh, you know, Marvel's paying some people like twenty five dollars a page. How are you gonna live on twenty five dollars a page, Steve? You know, so yeah, that's, that's insane. So you know, so there's some companies that they're like, well, we're not really paying them a page rate. Let them go make whatever they want to make at a convention, and that's and that's how a lot of artists get by. Because even even at the height of Harley, I was making three or four times what DC was paying me at shows. So, and that's the height of Harley. So even even with my page rate, even with insane royalties. I made way more money going to conventions than I did from working for a giant corporation. So, yeah, but, but, but they own it. And if they want to come after you, they will come after you. Um, Adam Hughes is a great example of that. Um, do you remember Adam Hughes's famous power girl where she's sort of like laying on her back flying and you see like, yeah. So he had a print of that at Comic-Con um, and he made the mistake of putting the DC logo in the top corner. Um, and they came down, they, they, they confiscated his, his prints. They confiscated his cash pile. They took him back into a room and said, you can't do this. Um, here's what we'll do to try and make it right. But that's, that's why cover run became a book. That was basically DC saying, Hey, sorry, sorry that we had to do this, but you know, you can't use our trademark for your print. You know. Adam Hughes's variant cover of Harley is an amazing cover I don't own yet, too, by the way. That's yeah. a good one. I think I might have a copy laying around. You're so, kidding me. Um, no, I have I have one of every book I've ever done, usually graded at a 9.8. So. Well, when you decide to let go of that. Okay. You, know. you want me to crack it and mark it up or remark it? Or? If you send it back in, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm trying to get rid of everything now. I'm 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 on the 20 year plan for like the last part of my life. <laughs> so Erica, Erica came into me and uh, she turned my garage into her art studio. And our garage was just full of comic books. And she just came to me. She goes, Dad, do you care if I just throw away all your comic books? And I was like, you you can. You can throw away all my comic books, especially when I die. You can totally just dumpster them if you want to. I said, or you can take this book that I bought for 50 cents back in 1979 (laughs) and you can sell it for $5,000, you know, you choose, you know, but, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to sell, I'm going to try and sell like my entire collection, see if I can't sell it all before I'm dead. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm no longer officially adding to my books i am getting rid of all my books and that way that way when i'm dead my kids don't have to do it 
Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, the, the money will already be in their, in their LLC. So, does that make sense? Or am I just... No, I get it. Over? I get it. And thanks for that. Hit me up. Let me know what you've got going out. Because I have plenty of room. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I definitely will. I definitely will. I'm doing way less drawing and way more talking. I should have been done with this panel a long time ago. It's my bad. You shouldn't have invited me here. No, it's okay. I, like I said, I I think that uh, I think that these you know these live streams, you know when I when I just get on and I just uh, just draw, um, I'm I'm bored. You know what I mean? Like I'm bored doing it, so I can't imagine someone not being bored watching it. And I think at least we're talking about things that, um, that people should know. Yeah. Crypto is important in the world. Um, and also like we should do a live stream where you can go through and, and reveal some Easter eggs. Uh, and that's another thing I like, I'm learning this. So Del Sol, Miguel, I'll never get used to that. I'm just going to go with Del Sol. Like, he's really big at Easter eggs and his art, too. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll stare at his stuff for hours just digging in to find the nonsense that he hides in his stuff. So, anyway, I, I digress. But we should really spend some time going through some of your uh, all-time favorite Easter eggs that nobody on the planet knows is there. Um, but I've definitely started scouring through the chat hardened collections looking for easter eggs too there there are a ton a lot of them are are pretty private though you know what i mean like um i'll give you an example like uh if i have a friend die i definitely put them in the issue somehow um so i've i've put in um uh so i think the first person i did that with was my buddy jeff vice and then he actually did a he he did a he had a YouTube channel with, um, uh, uh, I'm thinking his name. Why does this happen to me? I is this a part of just like turning, you know, splitting the decade where you just can't remember names anymore? Yeah, it's age, sir. It's age. Jimmy Martin, Jesus Christ! It's either that or alcohol. No, no, I don't I'm, think you're big on alcohol. I'm not. I'm gonna go with age. I'm not. I I don't drink unless I'm with I'm with people I want to drink with, and that's not me alone. That's for sure. Um, but uh, uh, Jimmy Martin, and so they both did this. Uh, they had a, a, a YouTube channel called uh, Big Movie Mouth Off, and um, they both died. Uh, within, I think, like a four-year part of each other. Anyway, so in the issue where Harley goes to um, sneak into uh, Fifty Shades of Grey and Mad Max, they're in the theater watching uh, the movie with Harley and Ivy, and they're having popcorn. So, like, that, that would be an example of an Easter egg. But if DC... But nobody would be able to... Nobody would know that. Right. Well, I just I'm talking about I just like told everybody you... on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I just I literally just told like the entire internet. So anyone who wants to know, we now, all know now. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but I I I I know them so well. Like I know that their families would never like. First of all, I'm I'm pretty sure if their family does know, they think it's cool. You know, does that make sense? Like, they're, they're not going to come sue me. But, you know, if you have that one crazy friend who uh, is a little sketch, you, you, you might not want to tell him that you put his likeness on the cover to a PlayStation 2 game so Sony doesn't have to fork out $3 million in, in copyright infringement or whatever. You know what I mean? Or... I don't, I don't, I don't know how he, you know, won all of it, but, uh, I think he walked with like 3 million in settlement. So anywho. 
do do you guys do like hold harmless clauses in your contracts in case there is any lawsuits against whoever you're working for? No, um if you if you've ever read a work for hire contract, they're they're pretty bleak. Um my contract with both Marvel and DC basically say that they don't have to pay me at all. That they pay me because they want to pay me. So I have like if DC if and DC has never done and, and here's the follow up to that sentence. Neither Marvel or DC have ever done anything to break my trust in how, you know how they pay people. I've always gotten my royalty checks from them. I've always gotten my page rate from them. You, you know what I'm saying? Like there's there's zero reason not to trust uh, those two. So I don't want to throw that out there. But my contract does say that. Like if you if you really read the contract, like especially your royalties, they can do whatever the heck they want with your royalties. They can change them at any time. Okay. So, you know, but they, it, it's a, it's a way for them to, you want to, if you're smart, if you're a smart business person, you want to have a good working relationship with your talent that's working underneath you. Because what happens is if anybody starts to abuse talent, um, you know, we all talk, we all know each other. You know, that rumors, like if, um, if, if you're a publisher and it comes out that you're not paying your artist, how long do you think you're going to be in business? You know, cause you know, no one, no one's going to work for you. So all I'm saying though, is like when it comes, when it comes to like an artist saying, Hey, I'm owed this. If you really read your work for hire contract, you, you have, and, and you've signed it. And they have a copy of it signed. You really don't have any recourse whatsoever, because they could just pull out your contract and say, you know, hey, they they signed. So, no. But it's also the reason why I'm working way more on creator own stuff. Because as, as cool it, it, as it is to, like, go see, you know, the Suicide Squad movie where, you know, Harley looks just exactly like you drew her in the comic. Um, it's not cool to think that had you created your own Harley, that, you know, you wouldn't just be getting a, if you're lucky, if you wouldn't be getting a special thanks credit, you know, which I didn't get for Suicide Squad 2 or Suicide Squad. Um, got it for Birds of Prey, but I don't know how that works, and I don't, I don't think I don't think anyone at DC knows how that works. It's just like the will of whether or not they they deem your contribution, you know, worthy. I guess I don't know. They don't give you credit until after something's big, and then it's like, oh yeah, we better mention this guy. Well, you know, what DC, so, you know, the way DC helped me is like they, you know, obviously I did like a lot of uh, appearances. Like I've, I've done a few of their artist academies. Uh, I did a lot of uh, appearances like at San Diego. Um, and anytime you do something like that, then, you, you know, it, it brings, it just, anytime you're on a DC or Marvel anything, it brings attention to you as an artist. Um, but not all artists know how to capitalize on that. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the first time I went to a convention, Steve, I had nothing. I didn't have prints. I didn't have a tablecloth. I didn't have merchandise. I literally just showed up with a sketchbook and a notepad. That's it. The first time I went to a convention. And how many times has your name been spelled wrong? Dude, that, that still happens. <laughs> I know. That still yeah. happens. And the, 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 Does it piss you off or do you just laugh about it at this point? I, I just Jimmy laugh. gets mad. When Jimmy's name is spelled wrong, he gets angry. Oh, what do they do? Like switch the I and the O? Yep, yep. Yeah. They always they yep. always add a G for me. It's Harding. H-A-R-D-I-N-G instead of I-N. So, but no, I've, I've been Chaff Harden, Chris Harden. Um, 
uh, Harden spelled with the E instead of I. That you know. But no, I, you know. It, and it wouldn't be that bad if there wasn't, if there wasn't a. Uh, there's like a Chad Heinrich, and we look eerily similar. <laughs> And for whatever reason, for a lot of shows, like they put us like either either we're con neighbors or like we're directly across the hall. And I can't tell you how many times like people come up to me thinking I'm him and and they come up to him thinking he's me. And then we just point at each other. (laughs) Anyway, but and then uh, Jacob, do you have did you ever meet Jacob? Jacob or Gemma, Steve? Uh, not yet. So before Joy was able to go with me to the shows, uh, Jacob and Jimma would come and help me. Uh, no, and, no, I met Jacob. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's when I act- first met you. I met Jacob. Yeah. And so if you look on the internet and you do a Chad Harden search, a lot of the pictures of quote unquote Chad Harden are actually Jacob because they thought, they thought Jacob was me because I, I would, I would just be there drawing at the desk, but Jacob would be the person interacting with everybody. So Yeah, I remember when I met him, you couldn't do any commissions. This is when we met. And my daughter wanted a commission, and you did the commission for her. Yeah. But she wouldn't do one for me. She was <laughs> a jerk. So then I had to butter you up to get I, you to start drawing for me. Well, that was probably like the highly skeptical phase. You know what I mean? No, no. My daughter was with me, dressed up as Harley. Oh. And she she asked, and she was denied. And then you came up and saved the day. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I'm towards the end of the show in Portland. Yeah. I'm I'm glad I did. But yeah, I. Yeah, me too. But see, this this is what's hard is I probably told Jacob that I didn't have time for anything else. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm the one that told Jacob to like cut off the commission list. And then here comes your daughter, and I'm like, oh. You know, she's dressed like Harley. She's a true fan. You know what I mean? And then it's yeah, like, and, and then I got to do it. Six. Wow. Maybe seven, six. Okay. She was young. And, and that was yeah. what, 2016? So now she's what? 13 12. now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 13. Yeah, she is 13. God, you're better than me. Oof. Dude. You're, you know, we we're talking. So with Miguel, he was in the shit when it came to animation. You're at the father. You're in. You're in the shit at the father stage because once they turn thirteen, they are no longer daddy's little girl. And yeah, you ain't lying. I don't oh, exist man. anymore. Oh man, that's a hard time, buddy. That's a hard time, especially when you're used to hugs and snuggles and you know, and just them being sweet. You know, it, it's you, you become like a rotating. Uh, machine for atm slash uh, car keys for a long time yeah, she, doesn't even, she doesn't even know when i'm home anymore like, yeah i'd be gone for a week and she wouldn't know yeah that's hard man that's hard but that's uh, just just wait to just wait till they're getting married when they bring over their fiance i'm not ready for that sir i know Slow down. i know i'm not ready for it either but it's happening I'm, I'll just ignore it. Move on. So Allison's asking Crystal Faye. Yes, absolutely. I don't know if she wants that out there though, Allison. So maybe don't ask Allison for. Um, I don't know. Ask her to show. Yeah. See. Yeah. Uh, Allison's in the same boat. Yeah. When your kids turn thirteen, you become the plague. So, if you're a parent out there, you have 13 years to make an impression on your child before that child becomes becomes immune to your advice. And then after that, you just sort of have to stand back and see if you're a good parent. <laughs> so, oof. and in my case, I was a horrible parent, but I am married to Joy. So, my kids turned out fine.
I should have been done with this panel so long ago. I am noodling this thing to death. Oh, you know what? I didn't even show you guys. Like, uh, I meant to do. What time is it? Oh my gosh, we only have 20 minutes left. So I think this was the page that we had last week. So here it is, all finished up. Um, I think the only part that I didn't have done was this panel right here. And then all the other panels we had finished, but I I added this sort of uh, schmutzy... Let me turn off the stupid lines on this thing. Oh, and then let me turn off the sketch tool. There we go. So here it is in Procreate without the... The only thing it doesn't have are the gutters and the, the balloons. But this is how that page turned out. So... Should we do some traditional drawing at this point? This is so cool, man. Like, it's it's impressive to see, like, a, a comic book artist at work, man. It's, it's amazing. Well, I, I would have loved to have it as a kid, and that's sort of why I do it. Um, you know, all I had was Bob Ross on PBS once a week. And uh, I could never get my paintings to look like his paintings. But let's get this going. Let me get let me get my drawings set up. Oh, I just dropped just dropped like a five hundred dollar baseball card in the garbage on accident. Throwing up my artboard. Oh, that is gross. I'm so glad. Ooh. So glad that I had the the other. I almost chopped my finger off the other day, Steve, doing washing the dishes. I got a nice little scar. But it was my bloody, it was my, it was my bloody bandaid. Okay, so let's. Uh, I think that's that's reason enough to never do dishes. Two dishes again. Yeah, I should. If only I could convince Joy. All right, so here's the visualizer. Let's get the visualizer set up. And Delso, this is what you need to do in swarms is like some live art streams, man. Swar swarms? What's a swarm? What do you? That's my collection. It's the name of my. Oh, uh, like, okay, okay, okay. That's, that's what it is. It's okay. uh, it's cool, man. That's it's it's I I, I love man. I draw like this. I I have like fascinating stuff, man. It's it's so cool. Do you colorize everything? Do you do that as well? Or do um, you when, when I have time, when I have time. Ah, oh, that light is right in everybody's face. Hold on. I got this figured out though, so at least you guys can see the drawings now. But I got to get enough light that I can actually see what the heck I'm doing. And that blows it out. Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, look at that. Please work. There we go. Okay, so um, Steve, do you? So Steve, I figured out an option on whatnot where I can basically just we can almost do like a trial, just you and me, and that way you can pick up what you ordered last week because that order did not go through at all. But I'm gonna try. Yeah, it'd be nice to get you paid. Um, I'm gonna try again on Saturday and I'm going to throw in um, the one in 25 Harley cover variants that I just got. The ones I tagged you in on Facebook. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Those ones that I still need to pay for too. Uh, no, uh, my, my, uh, my cover to Harley Quinn number five Legion of bats. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, um, Anywho, but yeah, I need to get you the 30. Ah, and I just hit the camera big time. Sorry, guys. Everyone starts throwing up from motion sickness. All right, let's get this inked. This is the hardest thing about um, jumping to going traditional is like, I'll if I make a mistake or something like that, I'll try and do an undo even though I'm drawing traditionally. Like, in my head, I'll be like, control Z.
Yeah, but this is uh, one of the commissions that I had basically promised for that whatnot sale. And then I tried to draw it on the live stream and it just got blown out. And now I figured it out. So it only took me a week to figure it out, Steve. That's not too shabby, right? As busy as you are, I, I don't know how you, you pack it all in. But yeah, it's it's nice to see you actually drawing instead of just a white cover. Yeah. Yeah, that was upsetting, man. Because I was trying to, like, I, I thought I had it all, like, ready. And uh, I could not get it to work. And at the same time, it's like, you the last thing you want to do on the live stream is try and troubleshoot. So I just switched back to the old iPad. Hey, Miguel, have you watched the, the, the show Sandman? No, no, I haven't. Well, you got to check it out. Chad turned it on, turn, turned me on to it, and it's just... So good. One of the best shows I've watched in a long time, and, and just the art that's in that show is pretty amazing. So I think that's going to be my next commission is I want like a... Sandman with the helm, and I want a scarecrow, but a female version without the mask. And the little pumpkin head guy that's running around everywhere on the planet. Um, that incorporated somewhere in there. Yeah, I want to have some fun with the next one, Chad. Um, I definitely am down to do a uh, Sandman because right now, my probably. So my Harley prints always sell the best, but um, as far as non Harley prints go, she's my number one selling non Harley print. So I know that if I do it, I, I, did I say death? I meant dream. What did I say? Oh, oh well. I meant dream. I meant Mobius. I I have a um, I bought a. Uh, I bought a shield in Vancouver that I can put over my art and rest my hand like this. And I cleaned up my office and I've lost it. But I need to find it because it's what Dawn uses on hers, on her live stream. So you can actually see the artwork underneath and it's not covered by this stupid... I guess I could just take the comic backing board out, but I like how it sort of gives my hand a little elevation. For, for a lot of collectors, like, grading matters, right? So have you ever found that using your hand or a board or, like, does that ever affect the grading? Um, like, you don't sweat much, which is just crazy to me. I sweat, but I sweat in my head. I don't sweat in my hands. Um, and I've never had carpal tunnel. So many people I know, knock on wood, I say that, and then the next thing that will happen, like, right during this live stream is I'll just instantly develop carpal tunnel um, so I just saw something going on in the chat yeah Allison didn't like my finding a bloody band-aid on my artboard Joy some she's in the next room she'll often ask me she's like why are you breathing hard and because when i have a delicate line i'll hold my breath do you guys pick up on that can you hear it when i do that i don't know i'm always self-conscious about the noises i make but i can't hear it okay i can hear myself doing it your farts we hear all of <laughs> Dude, you dude I, I, that's why, that's why these things are only two hours. Cause eventually at one point I'm ha going to have to go to the bathroom and I don't want anyone hearing that noise. You, you ran away before. And did every I, did time I? you go to your, you, you go to your blank screen, like whatever, uh -huh. but you never have your mic off. So we <laughs> hear everything you do. So you can hear me go to the bathroom. Oh yeah, when you no. Say, hold on. Yeah. Anytime you say, hold on here. Your mic's always live. Oh, no. All right. I'm going to turn that off. Was I, like, grumping one out? It was like, Arr! 
Uh, I'll never tell. Oh, okay. All right. I'll have to go back and watch my own videos. I want to get to the point where I can do my lines, like uh, Bruce Tim and Shane Glines. But I, for me to do that, I need to start working traditionally, like 100% of the time. Because it's not going to happen with with me like doing all my work on an iPad. But I paid for a, a commission, a Bruce Tim commission through a dealer mm -hmm. and uh, waited three years and never got it. That's heartbreaking, dude. Yeah. It's like some NFTs I've purchased. Same stuff. Bad characters no matter where you go, right? Yeah. Yeah. You definitely have to have like good people. Um, you definitely have to have good people that are, that treat you right and that are honest. Um, like I said, like the guy, like every, everything I know about crypto and NFTs um, comes from the crypto comics crew. So like Jared and Andrew and Joe and, um, Dude, I'm forgetting a name. Fudge, I, dude, I'm, I, you know, I'm just not gonna do names today. Fudge. Dude, I can see his face. Russell. Fuck, that's not right. Dag on it. All right. Anyway, anyway, my crypto. So, you know, I those guys, like I said, they're still working on it, just making it better and better, but also making it so. Um making it so everything that's happening that's giving people a bad reputation can't happen on their marketplace. So, and I do believe if you bought, if you bought an issue of Temerity um, and you're waiting on the fulfillment, the fulfillment finally came through. So. That's good, I'm waiting for all of them. Yeah, so um, what I'll do, Steve, is I'll give you a call up and I'll see if we can't do like a three-way with um, with Andrew and make sure you get your copies. So. Oh, not worry about it at all. Where's Temerity at, by the way? Like, is that going to be a... a are you continuing that at all? Or? I, I would I would love to. But when Gemma and I formed the company, we we did it wrong. And the way we did it is basically we were doing a 50-50 split on everything. And there and to, don't get me wrong, like if I was making my goal on Death Watch is to make the same the, the same number that I did on Temerity, excuse me. Um, but it just wasn't enough to support her family and my family. And so, um, and basically what it would take for Temerity to be profitable is to have a single owner. Um, and, and so it, you know, basically one of us would have to give up you know, part of our creatorship and, and, and neither of us, one of us wants to do that. So for temerity to happen, it's going to have to happen when, when I have, I have basically I have the money to do it. So, or it's, it's more profitable. So, um, because we just weren't, we just weren't making enough money. We did two issues and, um, we, we were basically at break even after two issues. So, um, yeah. And, you know, when I was doing Temerity, when I was doing Temerity, I was also still like, I was still doing comics for DC. So that's, um, still doing comics for DC and then working full time at the University of Utah. So I'm putting in 80 hours a week for University of Utah, probably 40 hours a week for DC. And that's why there was two issues of Temerity in like two years. You know what I'm saying? It, yeah. Yeah. Fun book though. Fun characters. I I will stand it's by true. that artwork. That artwork is some of the best artwork I've ever done. Um, oh, you always go overboard on your starships, spaceships, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. 
No. Because I'm a nerd and I grew up with Star Trek. But yeah, if I if I get to the point one day where like I have crazy Todd McFarlane money, it's it's on like Donkey Kong. But um so here's my tip. If you're if you're a budding comic book artist, um just learn to do everything by yourself. Because really it's sh- it's so hard to to make money, especially when you're starting out. And j- and here's the other thing, just because you're like big at Marvel and DC doesn't mean that that's going to translate to create your own support. Um you know, because people get invested in the characters. They don't necessarily get invested as you in you as an artist they get invested in the characters um so if you're if you're drawn for like marvel and dc right now start working on your creator own stuff by yourself and wear as absolutely as many hats as you possibly can as you just just as the creator so for me that means i taught myself how to ink taught myself how to color because for the longest time for for DC and Marvel both, I just did pencils. That's it. Um, I didn't ink. I just I just drew in my you know just drew pencils with pencils drawings. Um, but now I know how to color. I'm learning how to letter. I'm learning how to design my own fonts. Um, not that not that all the wonderful letters and colors that I work with aren't phenomenal. And deserve every penny that they've ever you know been paid. It's just that when you're doing your own book, if you can do the sweat equity, then you're not going backwards. Uh, fr- from your bank account, you're not going backwards because that's that's the real pressure. Like once you start doling out money, and you're paying, you know, like your writers getting paid, your letters getting paid, your colors is getting paid, but you're not getting paid. That is a great way to get your number one fan extremely mad at you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Steve? <laughs> so No, no, I get it. It's like from my perspective, I appreciate that I can work with you on a piece and that you can ink it and color it and do all that stuff. Because if if I have to have somebody else ink it or you arrange for somebody else to do it it's like it goes from twenty five hundred dollars to five thousand dollars really quick so yeah I, i'm glad you can color man <laughs> i real i i would do this all day long and honestly like commissions are probably like i said uh conventions are are where i make my most money but it's this weird balance where uh, there's not a lot of creativity. It, 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 okay, well, look at Harley. How, how many? Oh, dag on it. How many drawings of Harley do you think I've done since 2016? Tens of thousands. Exactly. And um, I'm sure I can always use a new Harley print. But for me, it's like the new challenge for me. It's to see can I get the same love from my fans for something I've created as opposed to something somebody else has created and somebody else owns the copyright to. So it's almost like that's more, way more motivating to me to like draw my own stuff than it is to draw this for somebody else. Because like I said, if, if DC or Marvel wanted to, they could just come in and, and yank out the carpet from underneath me at any time. So. Well, that's so it's interesting you say that again because when I ask you to do just whatever, like it almost feels that you're uncomfortable with that much um, flexibility in your art. Are, are you talking about nudity? No, 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 no. Like when I, when I say, hey, just draw whatever. Like, oh, you yeah. Just draw whatever you want. Like, yeah. You really feel. And I, I could be wrong. Could no, be you, no, you're right. But... You're you're absolutely right. Be, but that's also because like, I'll do something crazy. Like, some I can't remember the last time someone asked 
for that, I did Wolvesbane from New Mutants, which you talk about like a D-list character. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've just learned that like when people sometimes, and I, I think you'd probably be cool with it, Steve. Like if I gave you Wolvesbane, you'd actually be cool with it. But there are other people that say, draw whatever you want. And what they really want is a really kick-ass Harley. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, and that's not... Yeah, I get that. I get yeah. that. But at the same time, like, I, maybe it comes with a, a warning, right? So when I say that, it's because I appreciate the artist, and I don't want to hinder their creativity. Because often when I find... When I say, just draw whatever you want, like, when artists get in the zone and they are just feeling something... Mm -hmm it'll be the best piece of art that I've ever purchased or you'll ever see from them because like they're invested in that. It's not, you know, Oh, I want to hardly laying on uh, whatever, you know? Yeah. Which you've done a million times. Like I want the artist to be invested in the piece that they're drawing for me because then when I put it on my wall, like that's the piece that'll draw attention, not the thing that they've drawn a million times. Does that make sense? Well, um, you saw my, it does. And you saw my, my Ripley, right? My, my alien one that I did. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So that was the first time in probably 20 years where I sat down and just said, I'm going to draw this for me. You know what I mean? Where it's just like, nobody's asking, nobody's asked for this. I just really want to draw Ripley. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I want to do a RoboCop piece. I want to do, um, I've had ideas where I just like take famous covers and it's just like draw crazy stuff on them. Um, so it's almost like a co cover spoof. Like I would love to do that. And I think those all would, would all be great. Fine, fine art markets. Like if I just started putting whatever on new mutants 98 instead of, you know, um, I would love to do stuff like that. But... I think it'd be good for you. And I, I think the people that appreciate you as an artist will 1000% buy into that. And again, I'm going to use Del Sol because he's in here and he like completely geeks out on his work mm -hmm. because even though there's like, I'm going to use the bees from swarms, like, it's an idea, right? But like, that's his passion. And in every piece he does in that collection, like you can feel his mood inside that art. And, and he really is passionate about it. But and I think your fans, your true fans would get behind that work as well. Just like your new book, just like Temerity, like that's, that's your, you own that. Um, and, and, we appreciate that as, as fans and we feel it like we feel your passion in your art and also when you've drawn something a million times sometimes we look at it and go yeah yeah you know yeah yeah and sometimes that happens even when you oh i think i just split my sometimes that happens even when, when you're stoked there's you know you talk about like bad feelings there's some times where I feel like I nail a drawing and then I give it to the person. Like I, I usually gauge how happy people are um, just by their facial expressions, which is why I came in first in that poker tournament. I literally just like watch people when they bet. And so I, you know, anyway, I'm terrible at math, but great at reading people's faces. So like if, if I worked really hard on the commission and I feel like it came out like really cool, and then, like, the person I did it for, um, like, their reaction is just sort of like, mm, dude, that ki that's like a knife in my heart. Like, I just, want, I just want to be like, okay, give it back and let's make you happy. You know what I mean? Um, and that's, so there's parts of the artwork. So, um, you know, the, the art field that, like, and Miguel, you can tell me I'm wrong if I, if I get out of my lane. But it sounds to me like what Miguel's doing is very much more fine art, where it's art for art's sake. And basically, you know, comic books and all this stuff, 
it's it's not art for art's sake it's commercial art and so it could be hard for you know artists who are commercial artists are all the time like um it's some of that stuff can be mentally exhausting steve like like you know death yeah. death watch is a million times harder for me than drawing hardly because i have to create everything everything with Harley, I I knew Harley by heart before she was ever a comic. So, like, when someone says, this is what I want to do, it's like, that image is already in your head. It's there. But, like, with Death Watch, you have to, I have to design everything. There's, it's never been done before. You know what I mean? So, I have to design the look for my character. And then, like, here's the thing that really sucks, is the design that you do on Friday you don't like it the same way you do on Monday morning. So like, you might be like totally stoked on it. And then you look at it Monday morning and you're in a different mood. And you're like, Oh man, that's like the dumbest thing ever. And so, and when you've put it to a comic page, then you have to slowly make the change over time. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Like you have to slowly morph it into, to being what you want it to be. You can't just suddenly change it because then the reader says, well, Hey, that this costume in panel one is not the same as costume as panel two. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? It makes complete sense, man. Like it's it's very different. It's almost a completely different skill, man. For the, from the commercial experience that I've had, it was a completely uh, like it's almost a different muscle. Like the effort it takes is is crazy. This is why almost I prefer my case. fine art TV approach is less. Um, you're less restricted with that continuity and you can kind of like frame it in a moment. And that's what it is, which is a completely different challenge than what you're doing, which is the whole story. I can't even imagine how just the complexity of having that world in your mind, expressing it accurately and consistently. It's, it's a, uh, yeah, it must be very, very exhausting, but it's also like, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's kind of a cool feeling to have your, you know, it's your own thing. It's your baby. It's, it's beautiful to see you. And it's a, uh, I don't know. I, 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 that that reward to me, at, at least in my zone, is completely worth it. Yeah. But, but it, it has to be a million times harder too, though. And, 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 and you talk about like taking a risk. Oh my God. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's the danger zone. Man. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> but at, at the same time, when it connects, it's a good feeling too. Like, it's, but it's uh, for real. It's it's for real, for real. But it's also, uh, there's something fun about that too, I guess. Yeah. No, for sure. You probably you probably just don't feel the same restrictions at all. When it's, when it's 100% yours, yeah, that's, yeah. And do you, I, I like when I look at Harley, like when I'm drawing Harley, it's like having a beautiful daughter, but knowing she's not really your daughter, like maybe she's like your adopted daughter or somebody else's daughter, but you're raising her, if that makes any sense. And then you do things like Temerity where they're like your real children and people don't, they don't love it like they love Harley. <laughs> It's like a bad feeling, man. It's like why don't? But I... no, Temerity was so good, though. Yeah. No, I and 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 let me tell you something about the Temerity fans. I still get people asking me at shows, and um, like I said, it, if it made the money, it would be a no-brainer. But it just, it didn't make the money. So, you know. But a lot of that's just scale, too, right? Like. I mean, you look at, like, DC and Marvel, like, they are in every store on the planet, and, like, you just don't have that reach yet, so it, it never got the opportunity it might have. Right, and, and like I said, it, like, it would have, it would have worked if, if, you know, it would have worked for Gemma if she would have just you know, hired an artist freelance and it would have worked for me if I would have just hired, you know, somebody freelance, like, like the money would have been there for like one owner. It just wasn't there for two. So like I said, that's, that's my hope that, 
if if I get to the point where I can just pay my bills with Death Watch, I will I will take I promise you I will take that football and run as long and as fast and as hard as I can. Because um, that's the other thing that independent comics need. They need like marathon endurance runners. Do you know what I'm saying? Because nothing with with like the rare exception. I'm trying to think of the last comic book that was just like an overnight instant success. Do you have any that come to mind? Like Mutant Turtles. I guess Mutant Turtles was like a, an overnight success, right? Are you guys still there? Yep. Yeah, still there. Yeah, so, uh, but that happened in the 80s, and those guys had to borrow $500 from, they, they, I think they worked at Pizza Hut, and they borrowed $500 from their manager at Pizza Hut to, to make mu- the first issue of Mutant Turtles. Um, and then, but what's crazy is, like, I love that comic book, but where they made the money is they literally had some some stranger approach them out of nowhere and said, I'll sell the the toy rights, I'll sell the movie rights, and I'll sell the television rights. And then he delivered. Like, he delivered. So, so really, like, as cool as I love Mutant Turtles and I love the comic and how huge they were as a, you know, comic sensation, when it comes to the, those guys, like, actually having money to put in the bank, all that money came from selling it in other markets in in other incarnations you know what i'm saying so the only people that i know that really make a ton of money off of comics are the people who are grinding like brian polito marat michaels um ryan kincaid tyler kirkham um and these guys are just machines they're just Steve, have you ever have you ever gone to Chaos Comics? Have you ever he'll let like he has a he has like a retail store in in uh, uh, in Arizona. Have you ever been to Brian Polito's setup? I've lived in Arizona, but I have not been there. No, dude. Do you ever go back? Like, do you have friends and family there? I might be in Texas soon, so I might be driving through. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you're going to Texas, see if see if. Well, I don't know if Marat has like a retail space like Brian does. Dude, Brian runs a tight ship, man. Like, like going going to Chaos Comics in Arizona was like going to the Sistine Chapel, not knowing what you were gonna see when you walked inside. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like, I, I was just blown away. Like, his organization, um, he has, like, a full-blown team. They all they all love working there. Everyone's happy. Um, he has, like, a museum. He has artwork all over the place. Uh, the toilet is actually a skull, which is, it, sound, it sounds crazy, but it's actually freaking cool. Um, and that's what I picture in your house, to be no no dude no joy lives here joy lives here <laughs> my, oh, my, yeah. my office is the only trashy geeky place in the house and the rest looks like you know like home sweet home Oh, dude, we're at 714. Okay, guys. Uh, I'm surprised Joy hasn't come down and put an end to the party. But So, when would be a good time to talk not in front of the whole entire internet? For me? Or are you talking? Both of you. I'm good whenever, man. You have have my number. Okay. Well... Um, And then... Del Sol can DM you and you guys can That'd be that'd be great. Yeah. Because Love to. Yeah, that'd be I'd I'd love to hear, you know, whatever. Because like I said, I'm always 
I'm always looking for the next thing. So, but yeah, let's uh, let's call it because it's seven fourteen. So, thank you everybody for showing up. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Now, once again, uh, as soon as I get this done, I'm gonna turn around. I'm gonna add it to my whatnot auction. Um, Steve, I'm gonna add your commission book. I, 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 I don't know how we're gonna have to. I think we're gonna have to have a private auction, just you and me. And then I'll have to open like this up to everybody else. Does that make sense? I don't know how to do it. Well, I think that'd be good just so we can make sure that it's not a mess. Yeah, because basically you got it last time, but the whatever something I didn't do something right and it didn't go through. So I want to, I want to make sure that you buy it on whatnot because I want whatnot to get there. You know what, what was coming to them because you know they have people to pay too. Um, but at the same time, I, I don't want to like put it up and then somebody, <laughs> somebody gets it from me because that's the only one I have. That's the only one I have. So, yeah. Anywho. All right, everybody. I'm sorry uh, if I neglected chat today. Let's see. Two, Chad, your disc help is an abomination. <laughs> Listen, we just need to get everybody into the Discord channel. Well, I need to do that. See if I did that, then you guys wouldn't see my deck top, my desktop. So, uh, Tooth is uh, he helps. I can uh, still see your desktop. We can do both. Oh, really? Yeah, I can view. Like I've been watching you the whole time. I'm. I'm sure Del Sol has been too. Okay. Well, I should have. I should have uh, covered that up. Anyway, I'll get it down one day, and then I'll die the next. So. But yeah, let's uh, let's schedule a time that we just uh, we'll figure something out. Maybe we'll do something with uh, maybe we'll do something with Death Watch, or maybe we'll just do something with uh, your Sandman. You know. Sweet, sounds good. Okay, buddy. Thank you. Have Thank a good you. Day. I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Thank you for coming and crashing. Anytime. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Miguel. We'll talk to you later.